Good morning. I'm Lee Jamison, and this is the 280th installment of the Bible in a Year. Today's readings include Isaiah chapters 28 through 29 and Philippians chapter 3. Judgment on Ephraim and Jerusalem chapter 28. Ah, uh, the proud crown of the drunkards of Ephraim, and the fading flower of its glorious beauty, which is on the head of the rich valley of those overcome with wine. Behold, the Lord has one who is mighty and strong, like a storm of hail, a destroying tempest, like a storm of mighty overflowing waters, he casts down to the earth with his hand. The proud crown of the drunkards of Ephraim will be trodden underfoot, and the fading flower of its glorious beauty, which is on the head of the rich valley, will be like a first ripe fig before the summer. When someone sees it, he swallows it as soon as it is in his hand. In that day, the Lord of hosts will be a crown of glory and a diadem of beauty to the remnant of his people and a spirit of justice to him who sits in judgment, and strength to those who turn back the battle at the gate. These also reel with wine, and stagger with strong drink. The priest and the prophets reel with strong drink, they are swallowed by wine, they stagger with strong drink, they reel in vision, they stumble in giving judgment, for all tables are full of filthy vomit with no space left. To whom will he teach knowledge, and to whom will he explain the message, those who are weaned from the milk, those taken from the breast? For it is precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little. For by people of strange lips, with a foreign tongue, the Lord will speak to his people. To whom he has said, This is rest, give rest to the weary. And this is repose, yet they would not hear. And the word of the Lord will be to them, precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little, that they may go, and fall backward, and be broken, and snared, and taken. A Cornerstone in Zion Therefore hear the word of the Lord, you scoffers who rule this people in Jerusalem, because you have said, We have made a covenant with death and with Sheol, we have an agreement. When the overwhelming whip passes through, it will not come to us. For we have made lies our refuge, and in falsehood we have taken shelter. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am the one who has laid a foundation in Zion, a stone, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone of a sure foundation. Whoever believes will not be in haste, and I will make justice the line and righteousness the plumb line, and hail will sweep away the refuge of lies, and waters will overwhelm the shelter. Then your covenant with death will be annulled, and your agreement with Sheol will not stand. The, when the overwhelming scourge passes through, you will be beaten down by it. As often as it passes through, it will take you. For morning by morning it will pass through, by day and by night, and it will be sheer terror to understand the message, for the bed is too short to stretch oneself on, and the coverings too narrow to wrap oneself in, for the Lord will rise up as on Mount Perizim, as in the valley of Gibeon he will be roused to do his deed, strange is his deed, and to work his work, alien is his work. Now therefore do not scoff, lest your bonds be made strong. For I have heard a decree of destruction, 
from the Lord God of hosts against the whole land. Give ear and hear my voice. Give attention and hear my speech. Does he who plows for sowing plow continually? Does he continually open and harrow his ground? When he has leveled its surface, does he not scatter dill, sow cumin, and put in wheat in rows, and barley in its proper place, the embers as the border? For he is rightly instructed, his God teaches him. Dill is not threshed with a threshing sledge, nor is a cart wheel rolled over cumin. But dill is beaten out with a stick, and cumin with a rod. Does one crush grain for bread? No, he does not thresh it forever. When he drives his cart wheel over it with his horses, he does not crush it. This also comes from the Lord of hosts. He is wonderful in counsel and excellent in wisdom. The Siege of Jerusalem Isaiah 29 Oh, Ariel, Ariel, the city where David encamped, add year to year. Let the feasts run their round, yet I will distress, Ariel, and there shall be moaning and lamentation, and she shall be to me like an Ariel. And I will encamp against you all around, and I will besiege you with towers, and I will raise the siege works against you and you will be brought low from the earth you shall speak, and from the dust your speech will be bowed down. Your voice shall come from the ground like the voice of a ghost, and from the dust your speech shall whisper. But the multitude of your foreign foes shall be like small dust, and the multitude of the ruthless like passing chaff. And in an instant, suddenly, you will be visited by the Lord of hosts, with thunder, earthquake, and great noise, with whirlwind and tempest, and the flame of a devouring fire. And the multitude of all the nations that fight against Ariel, all that fight against her and her stronghold and distress her, shall be like a dream, a vision of the night. As when a hungry man dreams he is eating, and awakes with his hunger not satisfied, or as when a thirsty man dreams he is drinking, and awakes faint with his thirst not quenched, so shall the multitude of all the nations be that fight against Mount Zion. Astonish yourselves and be astonished. Blind yourselves, and be blind. Be drunk, but not with wine. Stagger, but not with strong drink. For the Lord has poured out upon you a spirit of deep sleep, and has closed your eyes, the prophets, and has covered your head, the seers. And the vision of all this has become to you like the words of a book that is sealed, when men give it to one who can read, saying, Read this, he says, I cannot, for it is sealed. And then they give the book to one who cannot read, saying, Read this, he says, I cannot read. And the Lord said, Because this people draw near with their mouth and honor me with their lips while their hearts are far from me, and their fear of me is a commandment taught by men, Therefore, behold, I will again do wonderful things with this people, with wonder upon wonder, and w the wisdom of their wise men shall perish, and the discernment of their discerning men shall be hidden. Ah, you who hide deep from the Lord your counsel, those whose deeds are in the dark, and who say, Who sees us? Who knows us? You turn things upside down. Shall the potter be regarded as the clay that the thing made should say of its maker, He did not make me. Or the thing formed say of him who formed it, He has no understanding. 
Is it not yet a very little while until Lebanon shall be turned into a fruitful field, and the fruitful field shall be regarded as a forest? In that day the deaf shall hear the words of a book, and out of their gloom and darkness the eyes of the blind shall see. The meek shall obtain fresh joy in the Lord, and the poor among mankind shall exalt in the Holy One of Israel. For the ruthless shall come to nothing, and scoffers cease, and all who watch to do evil shall be cut off, who by a word make a man out to be an offender, and lay a snare for him who reproves in the gate, and with an empty plea turn aside him who is in the right. Therefore thus says the Lord, who redeemed Abraham concerning the house of Jacob. Jacob shall be no more ashamed, no more shall his face grow pale. For when he sees his children the work of my hands in the midst, they will sanctify my name. They will sanctify the Holy One of Jacob, and will stand in awe of the God of Israel. And those who go astray in the Spirit will come to understanding, and those who murmur will accept instruction. And that concludes the reading in Isaiah. And now Philippians chapter 3. Righteousness through faith in Christ. Finally, my brothers, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you is no trouble to me and is safe for you. Look out for the dogs, look out for the evildoers, look out for those who mutilate the flesh. For we are the circumcision who worship by the Spirit of God and glory in Christ Jesus and put no confidence in the flesh, though I myself have reason for confidence in the flesh also. If anyone else thinks he has reason for confidence in the flesh, I have more, circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews as to the law, a Pharisee as to zeal, a persecutor of the church as to righteousness under the law, blameless. But whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ, and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith, that I may know him, and the power of his resurrection, and may share his sufferings becoming like him in his death, that by any means possible I may attain the resurrection from the dead, straining toward the goal. Not that I have already obtained this, or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own, because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind me and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press upon toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Let those of us who are mature think this way, and if in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal that also to you. Only let us hold true to what we have attained. Brothers, join in imitating me and keep your eyes on those who walk according to the example you have in us. For many of whom I have often told you and now tell you, even with tears, walk as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their end is destruction. Their God is their belly and their glory is their shame with minds set on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, 
who will transform our lowly bodies to be like his glorious body by the power that enables him even to subject all things to himself. And that concludes the reading in Philippians. Thank you for watching this video all the way to the end. To gain a wider audience for this series of videos, I ask a few favors of you. First, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Uh, you can also click on a bell icon and that will make sure that you receive notifications when new videos come out. Then, if you have comments or questions, uh, even if they're critical, I want to hear from them. Be civil, of course. Uh, the YouTube algorithm rewards videos that receive audience participation. So, uh, I appreciate your input. You are a part of this channel as well. Thank you, and have a blessed day.